They first combo had boot belt combo. Boot belt hat combo. They first got they got them Wranglers and them got them rednecks came straight to vote. They was voting at 17, I believe, this year. They was going in. Hey, Beth, it was an amazing turnout, and I want to thank my black people, my Latinos, for pulling us through. Can't forget my Caucasians, because I know y'all put y'all hand in the hat as well. We couldn't have did it without you. Thank you so much, uh, my white white Biden supporters, or not even supporters. Let's just say Biden voters, because we vote, but we don't really have to support everything they say. So we just had a problem that we all needed to stick together to, to, to defeat. It wasn't, we know racism gonna always exist, but we did not want Trump leading the pack. We didn't want no nigga that, no cracker that powerful. He was the, he is the Malcolm X of rednecks, ain't he? That nigga put the hand up and just point the finger and they just walk where he say go. Whatever Trump say do, them goddamn rednecks was like they the nation of Islam for that nigga. Ooh, it's crazy, Denise. I'm so thankful that he gonna be gone just so we can begin to heal from the shit that he just stirred up. I don't care who you believed in, I don't care who you wanted to win, but listen, let me tell you, Trump support ain't shit. Not a Trump supporter. Not somebody who voted for Trump or didn't vote at all because of Trump. I'm talking about somebody who avidly believes everything that Trump say, adamantly. I don't, I can't do it. I can't do I can't live with y'all. I can't do it. You adamantly believe that the dumb shit this nigga do is okay. Is, uh, okay, I can't do that. Yeah, Sophia, tell all the voters in Georgia and all the voters in Pennsylvania, we appreciate y'all assistance, black people. Y'all came through like you were supposed to. That's a, that's progress, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what you say. What's up, Purple Pack? Mona. I got my purple pack in here. All y'all seem like y'all been here. I ain't see no new hands in the chat. Did I see a new hand? No, I ain't see no new hand. No, I ain't see nothing. What up, Linda Will? Okay, okay, Maria, Force MD. What's up, baby? Cheryl, how you doing, queen? Okay. Who we stretching out today, Beth said. Beth, you know this is the Let Me Stretch You Out show, and it could jump off at any moment. If I hear about somebody who do need to stress out, who you know personally, Somebody did something wrong to you, you put it in the comments. Put what they did to you in the comments. And I will freestyle roast them on behalf of the blood. I will freestyle roast them on the, on the, on, not on blood, but on the blood. I will freestyle roast them for Jesus. Come on, Delphine, I'm so glad you're here, Dale. I'm, that's my, that's my Dale baby from New Orleans. My New Orleans folks that came through, I am so glad to see you in here. Stay here. I'm in here every day. Put them little fake ass iPods, iPods in your day. You always got them hanging out your ear anyway, Dale. Hang them bitches in there and stay on here because I'm, I'm about to work for you. I'm about to work for you. This ain't going to be no live where everybody just look, sitting there looking stupid, wondering what we're going to talk about, wondering what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk to y'all. I'm going to interact with y'all. I'm going to read as many of these comments as I'm talking as I can. Cheryl said, I, uh, I lost my, I lost a so-called best friend. She found out I voted for Biden. She was really upset with me. See, that's one of them Trump, pump Trump supporters. Oh, Cheryl, I God, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. But I can stress out Trump. This is the Let Me Stress You Out show, Dale. And I, I freestyle. A stress out is a roast for the Lord. So I roast somebody with the intentions on healing them at the end. So how is a stress out a roast for the Lord? Because I'm going to tell you what you did. I'm going to tell you what you look like doing it. And I'm going to tell you what you should have done. I ain't gonna let you make no mistakes without helping you correct them. If I'm gonna roast you about it, I'm also gonna tell you how to keep you from getting roasted again. If this is only a stress out for the Lord. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you get in. Just in case you was gonna get in, I can help you. I can help you if you wanna get in. I'm gonna tell you what you should do probably. The Lord know I cuss. He made me like this. How else am I gonna have this show every day and talk some kind of shit that I talk and get this kind of love and I got from my book ads every day? If this ain't the Lord talking to you sometimes, He wants you to laugh. He wants you to be in a good mood. He wants you to get the real advice from what you should do. 
So if you did some fuck shit and I call you a baby, a, a, a baby pickup truck built bitch, if I call you that, that's because you did something. I would never say that to you if you're a good person. I would never do that. Hey, Nisha, I ain't no bully. I've been doing stand-up almost 15 years. I'm not no bully. I'm not going to talk about nobody that don't deserve it. If you get up in my comedy show, you that, you kind of bring whatever else I say on yourself because you kind of walk around disrespecting my craft. So I, then I owe you something. I got to stress you out. Yeah. And yeah, at the end of it, Renee Jackson, I always tell them, all you need to do after you do some fuck shit, let me tell you what you should do after that. And I'ma tell you, get, go get them goddamn aid. Go get them, go pluck them on pit hairs and start putting on some better deodorant and you won't be so bitter with life and you won't be in other folks' business. It take a real nigga to mind your business. It take a real nigga to mind your own goddamn business sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes. Yeah, the Lord wants y'all in a good mood. You got them right, Vice President. Amy Ross with the sauce, I'm so glad you're here, baby. You already know that music, baby. I'm not caring about the monetization no more. I'm just like, you know what? Until I figure something else out, we rolling with this. Where would I like? Listen. Oh, my God. Come on, now. This is Let Me Stress You Out Show, ladies and gentlemen. That was the meet and greet. So nobody was new in here, so y'all know what to do in here. Stay in here and put your comments in and watch me read them bitches while I'm talking. Dale, you still in here, baby? Let me see if Dale's still in here. Dale, you still in here? Because I need you. Because what we do in between these stress outs, if I don't get nobody, nobody don't type nobody situation in that I can roll somebody over, then I move on to something that one of my bookets or my family members or whatever told me. So now... The, they ask me questions about relationships, and I'm a, and, and I give advice. I'm not an advice. I'm not a middle of the road nigga. Damn, I'm gonna tell you what you should do. 2020 moving forward. If you ask my damn, if if you ask my damn opinion, damn, I'm gonna tell you this what you need to do. Because a lot of these people get on here and they be real middle of the road. You're like, well, damn, should I do it or should I not? Or what should I do or what should I say? In this subject matter, they never get, they just gave you the goods and the bads and didn't pick a side. I'm going to pick a side and I need all of you to be on board at the end of the day. I don't care what we say in the beginning. I need you on the, on the, on the bandwagon. I need my boogettes kind of at least have skewed your perspective just slightly on a subject or confirm the, conf uh, confirm the perspective that you already have. So, yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to confirm it or deny it. And y'all just roll with me. Now, now let me ask y'all this. Kia, I'm so glad you're here. We ain't going to get that second stimulus check. We ain't going to get that bitch till February. You're going to get that second stimulus check on Valentine's Day. That bitch ain't coming no time soon. Yeah, you're going to have to wait a while now because damn... Till Trump, Trump get all the way gone and Biden get a chance to stamp it and ask it. And by the time it gets to us, it's going to be definitely February 2021 before we get a damn stimulus check. Andre, what the you? What it do? Hey, Kiki, baby, I'm glad you made it. You came back to the Let Me Stress You Out show to fuck with your boy, and I'm so glad. I'm in Baltimore. I had a great show this weekend. Two great shows this weekend. Shout out to my boy Cleon and shout out to my boy Alex, Sir Alex, the comedian in goddamn Baltimore. They showed me so much love. Anyways, the question of the day is this. Because me and my cousin, who was a D.C. native, she, she the one I, I grew up, you know, I didn't know her when I was growing up because she's my mom's cousin. But I stayed with her. She grew up in D.C. She told me the rawest shit that I ever heard. She said, ask your book at she told me this. Now, hold on, let me turn it down a little bit. She told me, Romisha, she told me to ask you, my cousin from D.C., y'all say, hey, what's up, Chandra? Say, hey, Chandra. Chandra Jackson. Hey, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. That's my cousin. Now, y'all say, hey, to her if she in here. But anyways, Romisha, she told me to ask you, Andrea and Michelle. She told me to ask y'all, what questions do y'all ask right away when y'all meet a man? Your first date questions almost, not even first date, first interaction questions. 
what do you ask niggas right away? And she told me how she do it, and me and her came up with some with some kind of rules for y'all after y'all finish asking. What are the most important dating questions? The most important questions you can ask before dating, before you get the coochie, before you get up in that dealing or whatever you're gonna do. Before you get into all that, why? What is the question that you ask? Cause, hey, cuz, hey, cuz, no, not cuz, used to be a police. She used to be a police officer in DC. She know how to slam niggas at 6'5, six, 6'8. Six, hey, so she, hey, she gonna tell y'all exactly what you should do. Grown woman shit. Come on now. Magdalena, you already know my cuz about to break. She, me and her done broke down. So let me see what y'all gonna say first, though. Tell me something, Anissa. What you say, baby? And listen, what's, what's some of the questions you ask right off the, off the goddamn break? Off the fast break. As soon as you come off break, you asking this question. What is this? <laughs> Delphina said, are you, are you married? Are you in a relationship? And what are you looking for in a woman? Yeah, I'm on the fence with them. I'm on. I like two of them, but I don't, I don't. I'm on the fence with the last. I like the first two, Dale. I like the marriage. I like the relationship. I'm on the fence with what are you looking for in a woman? I'm on. The, I'm on the fence with that one, and I'm gonna tell you why later. I'm gonna tell you why later. But let me hear them out first. Let me hear them out, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't think what you look. I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm gonna think about it. Anissa, what's up, baby? Anissa. Andrea, how often do you go to the doctor? Andrea with a U said. Now I went to school with Andrea with a U. That's my damn that's one of my road dogs back in the day. So I trust what she say a lot of times. She says she asked him right at the beginning. How often do you go to the doctor? So you ask him that at the bar? <laughs> what did you ask him at the bar? I'm talking about if you and him were sitting on the stool, he wanted to talk to you. Now, this is how I went down with my cousin. Now, my cousin said when she met her man, she was at the bar. And he was, he, she was at a bar with the girl, with her girlfriend. And the girlfriend, the girlfriend was talking. And he kept butting into their conversation. And listen, she, hey, Sophia, she got real with that thing. He just kept butting in. And she was just like, you know, because she was there to watch somebody else. Another male friend. Willing to take an STD screen it. Okay, well, I can tell that Denise plan on giving that coochie up raw in the beginning. Um, Net, Net said, what do you expect from me? Mm, I don't know. All right, let me see. Legal job. What is your government name? <laughs> Are you married? What are you looking for in a relationship? I'm on the fence with that one. And if we vibe, how far are you? Are we taking this? Yeah, I'm on the fence with the whole last two. Do you have a criminal record? Mm. Okay, Tasha, that's a value for you. I can see that as a value. That's of a value to you. So I'm not gonna negate that one either. I'm gonna hold that one in our in our top top two, top five. Okay, um, Latasha says, are you seeing anyone? That's a reasonable question. I think I'm in a, almost in agree. I'm pretty much in agree with that. Denise King says she want to know, are you a freak on the first at the bar? What you about to eat this ass? What you going to do? I'm just asking you. I know this is our first drink. Let's get, oh, yeah, give me an armor and a sour. And um, do you eat ass? Huh? How long you been eating Gucci? You been eating for a minute? Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Oh, oh you do? Okay, good. Okay, now what is your name? What is your name now? Ah, okay, Rodney. Okay, good, Rodney, Rodney, Rodney. Good, 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 Rodney. So, um, I'm Denise King. I just wanted to know if you was a freak first before I know your name. Um, and my name is Andrea. My name is Andrea with the U. And I want to know if you uh, ever been with a man. Have you ever had any penis on penis contact? Uh, have you been, was you touched while you was a little boy, anything like that? that that's what Andrea says. She gonna ask you right off the dribble at the bar. She coming right into it. Yeah, let me get, um, let me get a rum punch. And, um, it, do you eat ass? Do you? I'm just saying, I'm coming out of everybody, but just me. 
Oh, uh, good. Oh, you do. Okay, cool. Now we can continue the conversation. Teresa Davis says, if I'm talking to you at the bar and I want to know who you are, I'm just going to ask, are you married and are you in a relationship? What type of relationship are you looking for? She feels like that's a valid question, but I, I'm on the fence with the last one. Well, be honest with you, Teresa Davis, I'm on the fence with the last one. Are you looking for, looking for or just plain? Are you really looking or just plain? Maria Davis says. Maria Davis said, our number one question is, are you looking for real? Or are you just out here trying to do what you could do when you could do it? That's what I'm on the fence with that one. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you why later on. Um, Anissa saying, what are your intentions for the future? What what do you want out of life? Ah, uh, that's very specific. That's very specific. But that I'm on the, I'm on the fence with that one too. I don't think that's being that I don't think one. Um, uh, let me see your what are your intentions for the future? What do you want out of life? Um, kind of. I like one of them. I don't like the other one too much. I don't think me and my cousin that's on our list, Anissa. So we gonna go over the list in a minute. And when I go over the list, y'all got them better be than said everything on it. Let me see. Does your wife know y'all are separated? Kiki said. Kiki be fucking with the married nigga. Kiki says she can't get the married nigga love nothing more than suck on one of Kiki's breasts. A married man, I'll try to, ain't nothing won't eat your coochie quicker than a married man. He'll eat your coochie in the car at the restaurant. And Denise King just letting us know in the comments that she is a freak. She said, my neck, my back, my coochie, and my crack. She wanted all done to her. She just letting her ancestors know. Because you know the internet is forever. So one day, it's going to be 90 years from now. Me, all of us going to be dead gone. Somebody going to say, my great-great-grandmother, Denise King, was on the internet. Back on some nigga named Boogie B Show. I had to Google him. I just pulled it up on YouTube and I saw Denise King and I clicked on the page and it was my great 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 grandmother. And she said that she want her neck, her back, her coochie and her crack. My damn, my damn great grandmother is a freak back in 2021. Hey, your sexual preference is um, what Andreas also said she's gonna ask. Hope said you ain't never lie. Okay, why can't we just chase you are looking for or what you want, do you just want to smash? That way we don't waste time. Okay, well, Renee, I'm on the fence with that one too, and I'm going to tell you why. When I say I'm on the fence, I just mean that I'm kind of on board, but not really. I'm going to we're gonna, I'm gonna have to break it down a little bit more. I'm going to have to get a little bit more specific this day. Come on now. Hey. Let me tell y'all something, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with some hard rules in this situation. I can tell y'all already. Because it seems like we're waning a little bit. We're waning a little bit with what we're saying that we asked. It. How often you play in the streets? I'm, I'm not sure that that's even a... That's, man, I don't think that one was on our list. But I'm taking it into consideration, Andrea. How long you been out? Kiki be dating them niggas fresh out of the penitentiary sometimes. So she have to ask right in the beginning, any the beginning, any, any the beginning, she likes to ask a nigga, do they, as they, what, how long you been out? Five years, two years? What you do, construction? Are you in construction work? Did you just come home from the penitentiary? Uh, do you, uh, yes, are you in the halfway house? Do you live in the halfway house? Sometimes that could be a prevalent question. It depends on where you live. Because some of that shit is going to be regional now. Hey, Kiki live in Vegas. So Kiki's subject to run across a nigga who just come home from the penitentiary two days ago. That nigga live, that nigga live in a halfway house. That nigga got to leave Kiki house at 4 p.m. He got to be back by 4 p.m. every day. Because he got the ankle bracing on everything. This nigga fresh home from the penitentiary. This penitentiary nigga will put dick in Kiki upper sternum area. That nigga gonna put a long hard dick laying on you. And you be like, damn, I forgot to ask you that you had just came home from the penitentiary. Damn it. 
I meant to ask you that, nigga. I knew I should have asked you had you just come home from the penitentiary. Shit. Now you done fuck my goddamn. You done. You done punctured my damn. You done put your nigga lean in my kidney. Oh, why did you put why did you put all that dick in me like that? And you done forgot to ask about it. So Kiki says number four is how do you feel like how do you feel about Polly? Well, I don't know. That's a weird ass question, Kiki. But you live in Vegas. That's a good one for you. Um, Vice President said, were you born a man? Has you ever had sex with the same sex? Are you married? And does your dingoling work still? Now that 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 that's hey, come on now, that's a that's Vice President, that's a very poignant list right there. I'm going to be honest with you. That is a poignant perspective you just brought up. Let me see what Natasha says. She says, How are your, how's your relationship with your mom? She asked him right out the, out the gate at the bar. Okay. I'm going to consider that one as well. Do you have a car in your own spot? Mm, I'm not sure about that. I'm on the fence with that one too. There are no rules in dating. Just use your own rationalization. I'm going to rationalize it for you, Hope. That's what I'm here for. Come on, Nikita. I ain't going to make you think too hard. I'm going to tell you what the hell you need to do. And you going to damn agree because me and Kiki and Dale and Amy Ross with the sauce and goddamn Vice President and my cousin Sandra, we going to tell you via experience that the rules I'm about to set forth for you are all fashion. Watch. Watch what I tell you, Amy Ross with the sauce. Uh, a red dude hollering at me full speed. I was laughing out loud when you said, when you said, when they let you out. His reaction said, okay, okay. Hey, nigga might be home on parole. Nigga might be home on probation. Nigga might be, hey, you got, that's a good question for some of y'all. New Orleans, y'all, you definitely need to ask a nigga from New Orleans. Hey, nigga, did you just come home? When you come home, how long was your jokes? How long you been in there? Yeah, okay, good. So you planning on putting dick in my kidneys, but you ain't shit. Oh, okay, I should have asked you. I knew I knew it. If you didn't ask, sometimes you fuck, you made a bad mistake in life sometimes. Sometimes, depending on where you live. I should have asked my ex if his ding -a still works. See, that one is on the list. That one, I'm going to make it rule. I'm going to make it number one on the list, as a matter of fact. My cousin Sandra told me when she met her husband and he wanted to talk to her, she sat him down at the bar and said, Sir, how are you? What's your name? My name is Sandra. Good to meet you. Now, do your dingling work. Do you have ED? He was like, what? He was so shocked he couldn't even move. She was like, do you have ED? Erectile dysfunction. Do you have it? They at the bar, nigga. Yes, cuz cut straight to the chase. I think some of y'all should ask that question. My cuz said she was standing a nigga two a foot from the table and from the dining room table. And she was say, pull that nigga lean out and get it on. If you can't touch that damn table, you can go on back where you came from. She asked some direct, she's a direct woman like that. And that's why she is successful in love, ladies and gentlemen. So rule number one, I believe the first question that you want to be first, it don't have to be one if you're shy, then you can make it number two or three. But it should be in your top five questions, ladies. Do you have ED? Ask them. Do you got ED? Do you got high blood pressure? Ask him about medical issues in general. Do you have polio, sir? Have you ever had, it's a history of polio in your family. Do you have sugar diabetes? Do you eat a lot of sugar? Um, yeah, get into a knee. You want to start with the ED and go into the medical issue. You definitely want to know right up front. Do, hey, do you have a gimpy leg? Is your toenails really brown? Um, what, what's going on? Is your eyes bloodshot all the time? You got to get, you got to talk to nigga about medical a lot. That's a good, that's an important one for you, ladies. Trust me, if the nigga medical history ain't good, he ain't taking care of himself, that dingling, that's, that's like asking, do you have STDs? You don't have to ask. 
that specifically. You can ascertain how the nigga had to ever got checked out. If he just tell you how often he been, if he got polio, if he got goddamn sickle cell anemia, if he got uh, uh, something, something incurable, that nigga ain't too healthy now. You gotta keep your eye on it. You gotta be like, okay, now. We definitely want to put a condom on because you got, you know, sickle cell anemia or whatever. Nothing wrong with that. But now I know how to deal. You know, I know what I need to do. So first, you need to ask if that ding-a-ling work. And second, you want to kind of ascertain whether that ding-a-ling is worth having or not. You want to ask medically. Medically, if that ding-a-ling ain't medically, is something wrong. Even if the ding-a-ling do stand up. If that nigga got sugar diabetes or... You might end up having to take care of that nigga. You, mm, you might want to be like, mm, how old are you again? So you say you got what now? Okay, so you got, oh, okay, cool. So you got, damn. So you, yeah, okay, so you got bronchitis. You got bronchitis for sure. Ah, okay, cool. So you definitely got bronchitis. All right, so now if you do have bronchitis, I know that you're going to be a loud snowing ass nigga. And I might not want to have sex with you with this all this snowing you about to be doing. So, hey, born a boy or a girl, you, hey, wait, no, no, you don't even have to ask born or boy or girl once you see how that dingling stand up. If you ask them about that dingling first, you're not going to have to ask if they're a man or a woman. Because they're going to tell you by their answer whether it was born a woman or a man. Or did he have a penis or not? You don't have to ask that one. You can ascertain. Because you don't want to become a goddamn drill sergeant. But you do, kind of. Hey, do you smoke? That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, depends on how much you can't take that smoke. That goes along with health conditions. Yes. So you can ascertain if he's a smoker. If that nigga got bronchitis. You're like, oh, this nigga probably used to smoke that shit. Oh, I don't tell it. That nigga might have had some crack back in the 80s or something. Nah, I'm not thinking I'm going to pass on this one. You get that shit right out of the open on the first damn day at the bar. Hey, he going to tell you that right then and there. Hey, Drew Atkinson, I'm glad you made it. You're late, but you're right on time for this ride. This is the Let Me Stress You Out show. And I'm asking my bookette. I've asked my bookette. What questions do you ask? Important questions that you ask before dating. And this is what they say. They say you want to ask what are his intentions in a relationship. Girl, that don't matter. What are your intentions in a relationship? What? Well, I don't know you. Shit, my intentions is to fuck somebody that, that like me enough for us to continue to fuck until we get into a relationship. If you got purple pack, you lead me the way you want me to go. Drew, if you got good dingling, it don't matter what her intentions is. It don't matter what her, uh, what, what, uh, her coming into the relationship thoughts was. I've had many girls that came into meeting me with, oh, he just gonna be a friend because he's funny. And guess what? After that, I was knee deep and waist high in some top shelf coochie. Hey, it wasn't my fault. She didn't plan on it. I got them showed I was a hell of a nigga and changed her whole perspective. Whatever she may have been thinking. Like my my my, my cousin husband, George, she George got that uh, ascertained her. He ascertained her by proving that he was the better man for the job. You can hit me with the questions. I got answers. That nigga say, what about this thing in here? Oh, yeah, I'm about to beat something up tonight. I'm glad you asked. I'm about to fuck the shit out of somebody's daughter right before I met you. You're lucky I met you today. Shit, if I would have met you yesterday, I would have just been fresh out that pussy. Because I fucks all the time. Now, what you got to say about that? That's what he basically said to her. He didn't say that directly, but he insinuated that, yes, this thing in here is strong. Now you know a bunch of things about George. From just that one question, you know that George has a dingling, and that dingling worked very well. Hey, and that you don't have to ask him if he's a male or female. If he is a female, if he was a female before, it don't matter now. 
because that nigga is still good and he is in shape and he's ready for the challenge. And he, and he got them confident enough to answer all them little puss ass questions. Bring them on. I don't give a damn about these questions you asking me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the answers too. Now, you want to be honest? Let's be honest. George was on it. George said, hey, listen, I might end up taking your ass down. Right in the beginning, he let her know, hey, watch what you ask me. I'm a hell of a nigga out here. Just watch what you ask me because I'm going to answer everything. And the first question was, do you have ED? George said, come on now, please. I'm on CMOS. I wish you would think I got, I'm, I got ED. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's the least of our worries. On to the next question. And the next question was, do you have medical issues? Uh, uh, no, hell no, I'm good. I work in construction. I build houses for a living. I goddamn put up sheetrock, goddamn it. Hey, I'm a hell of a nigga. I'll move your sofa in for you. I will move your sofa into your house for you. It's with no problem. By myself, I might put the bitch on my back. I might bring a refrigerator to your house on the first day. I'm that type of nigga. So no, I don't have no goddamn health issues. He handled that shit right quick. That's a great question. Medical issues is number two. Number three, her third question was, do you have a job slash career? She hit George with the one, two, like George ain't have his shit right. George said, do I have a job or a career? I have my own business, young lady. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, I have my own company where I move people shit. I build houses. I do construction. I wear Caterpillar boots to work every day. And I own my own and I run my own ship. She was like, well, shit, George, God damn. Once you hit number three, everything else is pretty much downhill. All these questions is really just subsequential. It's just substantial questions. Put the hundreds in the chat because I'm speaking all facts. Checking in late, Sarah Cassandra. I'm so glad you made it, though. We was talking about my cousin, Sarah. Yes, you're late, but you're right on time for this rhyme. Joe, hey, George put, hey, George put in what he was supposed to put in. I'll tell you that. George came through with my cousin hit him with the top three questions. Do you have a job or a career was number three. And he smacked that shit down. Because George was a hell of a nigga before he met my goddamn cousin Sam. You goddamn right he was. Come on, Connie. That ain't no freak or leak ding ling. Hey, listen. Fuck what? Hey, some of y'all was trying to ask what is his intentions for a relationship. My cousin ain't give a fuck what his intentions was for a relationship. She knew what she was capable of. She was like, I could easily put the nigga in a relationship position when I want to. So even if he say, I don't want a relationship, I don't care. I'm going to make you do what I see fit, because I might not even be ready for no relationship. You might be the third string, nigga. I just met you. I already got a line up. I had a roster before I met you. I, too, am a hell of a woman. You are a hell of a man. But I, too, am a hell of a woman who have a nigga, a train of niggas. Not, not a train ran on me, but a train of niggas around the block that, that would love to partake in some of this purple pack of... Uh, Skittle Scoochie that I possess. The type of, the purple pack that make your double back coochie that I possess, my cousin said to herself. So she had no need for the question of what do you feel in the relationship in the beginning? Because she already had some shit that she, hey, shit, hey, what you tell me when you're ready, nigga. I got shit to do right now. I'm gonna put you on the list though. You want, you definitely on the list, sir. You are on the list. You're a good guy. You answered all those questions very well, but I had a couple other niggas that answered them questions equally well, and I met them before you. So, yeah, you know, you got to kind of figure your way out. Come on now. You'll catch the end of the show on IG? Okay, we may be able to do the show on IG because I'm feeling the light. I'm feeling like it's cool and it's totally nighttime out here right now, and this is the best. Is this cool lighting-wise, guys? So we can do it on IG again. We're going to do it for the second half on IG in 20 minutes. But I'm here for the whole, I'm here for the whole 20 more minutes. I got it for you. You came here for answers and I'm going to give you answers, Tina. Come on down, Romisha. Romisha said, at least I knew his name. 
Hey, you knew his name. My cousin came straight up. What's your name? That doesn't count as a question. That is an introduction. So that's not a question. What is your name doesn't qualify for one of the first questions that you should ask before dating. Because that's that's a that's a hello, how are you? That shit you tell everybody. Hello, I am Michelle. How, what is your name? Your name is George. Okay, good. Boom. And that's how that's a, just an introduction. Y'all can either part ways from that point or not. Ashley Drew, what it do, baby? You're late, but you're right on time for this rhyme. These are the these are the top questions that you must ask before dating. Before dating that me and my cousin um, Sandra came up with. Now, let me move on because this next one is clutch as well. The next question, number four, this one is clutch. Now, I need y'all on this one. I need y'all to ask about the child support. I need you to ask that. The child support will fuck with you. That'll get you. That'll fuck with his whole financial status. It, it ain't gonna matter if he got a business or not. If he got a woman taking $10,000 a month from him, shit, that nigga broken in a nigga with no job if he's on child support. So that is a key question. You can ask fellas, you can ask women this too now, because I never asked a woman this one time, and she was getting busted in the head for spousal support. I was like, damn, man, fuck. What the fuck? You, I mean, you, you got a nice crib. And you make you make good money, but goddamn that nigga hitting you in the head, ain't it? Nigga hitting you in the head like Ken do did Mary J. God damn, you ain't got no damn money, you draining me dry. Oh hell no. I'ma have to change my answer when I got to number four. I was like, Mick, Mick. hold on, I got to question number four. I was like, nah. Ah, it's your own child support. Child support will take you into marriage status, Brandy. So if he is on child support, do you pay child support? How much? That's all one question. Because if the answer is yes, then you say how much. If the answer is no, you move on to the next question. These are the questions that you ask in the beginning when it don't matter what he feel. If that ass fat enough, he going to answer all the questions. Hey, Andrea, if them titties is doing what titties do that particular day, and when you meet him at the bar, he gonna answer them damn questions. He like, well, you know what? I'm gonna answer this shit because I, it's a chance I could be in this coochie tonight if I answer right. So you ask these questions at the damn bar. And fellas, I got some shit for you to ask. And this one gonna apply minimally to the woman. No. This one gonna apply equally to men and women. I need you to ask them, is your baby daddy crazy? I need, fellas, I need you to go with me on this one. If they all probably got kids. If we, depending on how old you are, most people got kids. Is your baby daddy crazy? Is what I'm asking before I ask you the number of kids. That's not even, that's irrelevant. I don't give a fuck how many kids you got unless I'm about to get into a heavy relationship with you. But for right now, I want to know, is this nigga going to come to this bar and choke you out and grab you from the bar and pull a pistol out on me? I want to know that while we sitting at the bar right then and there, Teresa. I, especially if you're looking good. Especially if them titties are doing what titties do. I got to ask you right then and there. I got to be like, hold on. Your baby daddy ain't about to come in here, is he? Is that nigga crazy? Ask if this nigga baby mama crazy. Ask that nigga if he is, hey, listen. Fuck how many kids you got because you could or could not be a great father. That's irrelevant to me right now. What it is, what is more relevant is, am I going to have to fight this lady in this goddamn uh, cheesecake factory? If she walk in here. If she walk through that door right now. If your baby mama walk through this door right now. Is me and her gonna have to tussle and fuck up the cheesecake uh, buffet in the glass? Ask that shit right away. When if, okay, so if your baby mama come into this Copeland, if your baby mama walk right into this TGI Friday, right now, 
And my titties is tittying right now. My titties is tittying to the tittiest of they could be doing. And now you see, she see me sitting with you. She gonna know the deal instantly when she see us. Now, if she walk in that door, am I gonna have to fight this bitch? You wanna ask that right away. That's that's definitely in the top. However many we got right now. You need to ask if your baby daddy crazy. Is your baby mama crazy? These women be having baby mama, baby daddy that's crazy, and they will not tell you until the time comes. All of a sudden, you bust it, he busts in the house, and you be like, get in the wash and dry you. This nigga crazy. I'm like, bitch, why you didn't tell me this nigga was crazy before I came to your house? Why didn't I ask you that? I should have asked you that and I forgot. I forgot to ask you. You told me you had kids. I forgot to say, is your baby daddy crazy? Now, I'm stuck in this washing and dryer in your goddamn linen closet for goddamn seven hours. Because you out here arguing with this crazy nigga and he got a pistol on him, damn. This nigga came in your house with a pistol because he saw my charge. He saw my charge. That nigga saw my charge in the driveway and kicked the door off the hinges. I had to hide in your wash and dry. And now I'm crept up for 17 days. I got to go to the gyro practice because you didn't tell me that your baby daddy was crazy at the bar. This nigga done walked into the bar. Now I'm, I'm this nigga poking me in my head and shit. You didn't tell me you fuck with nigga 6'5". We just met. You did not say you like NBA style dingling in you. You should have told me that in the beginning when we was talking about dinglings. You should have told me, yeah, and I like 6'5", niggas. So you could have led me into the question of, hey, is your baby daddy crazy? That nigga killer? Uh -oh. Did that nigga just come home from the penitentiary recently? I need to know if this nigga crazy at the bar. This nigga done bust in the goddamn bar with me and this broad. Now I just met her and I'm talking shooting my shit. I'm shooting the best shot I can shoot at the bar. And this nigga came in the goddamn bar six five poking me in my head and shit. Now I got the, I ain't got the pistol on me. I gotta get to the truck. This nigga got the heat out. This nigga got the heat in his hand. This nigga poking me ain't even looking at me. This nigga poking me like, you fucking with old bitch ass niggas like this? After we got, where my little boy at, bitch? I was like, woo! I, I said, woo, Lord, gee, woo! I said, this nigga, woo! I said, this nigga was poking me. I ain't even, I'm trying to decide what to do. Normally, if a nigga would have poked me in the head like that, I would have fucked him up off the dribble. But this nigga was so tall and so muscular, you didn't even tell me your baby daddy knew what CMOS was. I don't even know this nigga was on CMOS. This nigga been on CMOS since CMOS invented. This nigga is huge. You know, I, this nigga done came in on me. I'm in that bitch having to make a decision for my life because I forgot to ask you, is your baby daddy crazy? Because you showed me a picture of your little girl. She was on the screensaver on your phone. So I saw the little girl say, oh, that's your little girl. You said yes. I ain't got to ask you. I didn't think to ask you right then. Is that nigga crazy? I should have. I should have, Renee. But I slipped. And that nigga came in that bitch with ferocity. Who brings a pistol pulled out? This nigga must have been security or something. This nigga bring a pistol pulled out into the barroom. I was like, damn. And the nigga 6'5". I was like, damn. This nigga gonna kill me and her if I say anything about him poking in my head. So I didn't say shit. I just, I, I went to the bathroom. Hey, listen, I went to the bathroom on that nigga and her. I was like, you know what? I forgot to ask the question. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out. Good to see you. I gotta take a pee real quick. I'm gonna be in there about 35, 45 minutes. And I went out the back door. When I came out there, they was arguing, and she's standing in front of that nigga pointing in his face, and he still got the pistol out. This nigga ain't never put the pistol up. He just in there just talking to everybody with the pistol out. And ain't nobody moving. Nobody's budging. 
This nigga is tattooed from shoulder to sleeve. I was like, ooh, this nigga tatted from the shoulder to the wrist on one hand. And this nigga beard was very shiny and lustrous. When I tell you that nigga was beard gang or dope bang, I was like, ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm going to say something to this nigga. I should have been at So I could have knew when I saw that nigga, if he would have came in there, I would have befriended him before he saw me. Soon as I saw that nigga, I would have saw him coming there. I would have said, what's up, brother? Hey, this goddamn movement, brother, we own it. The people, Black Lives Matter, nigga, what's happening, brother? Good to see you, baby. I'm Boogie B. I'm a comedian. Just came to promote this show. I want y'all to come out, man. I want you to bring your lady. Y'all come on out, man. Y'all show some love, man. I need you. I'm trying. I ain't going to be able to make it without you, big dog. Give me one of these. That nigga hit the, hey, give me an opportunity to create something because I know the nigga crazy. Don't let me wait. Don't let me forget to ask you the question. And you didn't tell me? And this nigga walk in on us? Oh, hell no. This is a question that you must ask, fellas. You must ask, is your baby mama or your baby daddy crazy? You do not want to have to fight this woman in no way, shape, or form for some ding ling that you may not even want yet. You ain't even decided whether you want this ding ling or not. You definitely is not. You definitely not trying to fight for it right now. You ain't trying to fight for it right now. That nigga was tatted. You got them right, Renee Jackson. He was tatted like a subway in Harlem. I said, shit. I bet you, I, I bet you, I, I bet you, I ask next time. I bet you, I'll ask the next time. I should have asked her. I asked him right at the bar, just like my cousin did. I did. Is your baby mama crazy? That'll tell you even if he got kids. You could ask that before you ask if he got kids. That's a skip, skip, skip straight to that one. Fuck whether he got kids or not. That may never concern you. But is his baby mama crazy will affect you right now. Yeah. Now, what is the next one, Vice President? What did we have on next on the list? What do you have a job or career? No, that was root. That was question number three. Another question was you missed that one, Ashley Drew. Question number one. Let me go back over the list, ladies. Question number one is do you have ED? Does your dingling still stand up? That's question number one. Cause my cousin said, Sandra, she said, when do you want to find out that he has ED? Do you want to find out now before you put your effort in? Or do you want to find out when he on top of your neck is? And that thing ain't hanging like a microphone cord. You like, damn, woo. Have you ever heard of CMOS? You need to get probably, you need to probably start taking it. Hey, you got damn right. Now, these questions is what you ask post-2020. Post-2020 questions that you ask. Because the damn, like Renee Jackson said, the Black Panther is dead. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. I want my dealing to be Black Panther hard. That it got, my shit got to be. I can't accept no less. I'm going to do everything I got to do. Shit. Did you go back? Hell no, I didn't go back. I never saw that young lady again. I never saw her one more time. I, if she ever see this, I would never know because I can't remember her name. I remember how I felt, though. Hey, I remember how I felt when I forgot to ask. The sixth one was, are you married? Yes. So you definitely want to ask the next question. After you ask about the baby mama, is she crazy? You definitely want to ask, is you married? Is you currently married, legally married, whether you separated or not, are you married? Because I will have to fight your wife at this point. Hold on, my damn sinuses just start tripping. Okay, are you married is number six. Number six is the most important. Um, not right away. Not right away, Cassandra, because you don't want to marry this nigga. You just met him. That shit don't matter right now. You got two niggas already, you fucking. Come on, now you fight. You got two niggas vying for your love right now. 
Why are you worried about is this nigga married or not? What that got to do with you? You don't plan on giving him no pussy yet. You ain't even made your mind up about this nigga. Why are you even worried about it? If he is married, then well, you'll find out before you give him some coochie, but you don't need to find out right exactly at the bar. Hey, hit that cash app, dollar sign, Boogie BLLC. This is a limited liability corporation, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you take this information or not, it, hey, listen, I'm not liable. You can't sue me. <clears throat> this is, you ain't, if you try to sue me, you ain't gonna get shit. This is a limited liability corporation. Just so y'all know. Right, you should have been taking applications if you a hell of a woman. What the hell you mean? You ain't got no niggas to, that's already trying to get at you and already you already kind of evaluating whether you want to be in a relationship with them or not. So you don't know if you want to be in a relationship with a new nigga. You just meeting him. Shit, you don't know him yet. You ain't about to worry about all that shit. Married is important, but six worth of important because that's down the line. Yeah, it don't matter whether you lie or not. You got to figure out whether you going to even decide to give him some coochie before you even ask that. So that's important, but it's far down the line. It's far down the line. I'm glad I got you on board, Cassandra. Push that one down on your list. Some of y'all got some shit that's on y'all list that, eh, what do you want in a relationship? Why are you asking that so early? You making me think you can't get niggas to get in a relationship with you. When you ask me right when I meet you, do I want a relationship? No, not right now, bitch. I just met you. Um, I'm not about to tell you my inner secrets, bitch. I don't want you to know all that. I don't know you. So if you asking me something like that, I'm like, no. But my life could go at any curve at any time. I'm waiting for the right particular purple pack of Skittles. I'm waiting on the right combination of women. So, I mean, if you are that, you will sway me to whatever you want to sway me to be. You just need to be my friend first so that you can see how you can sway me into the relationship aspect of life. Even if I say, well, right now, you know, I ain't really looking for too much, you know, just somebody cool to kick it with. You know, hopefully I can find somebody I can enjoy. And then you move slowly into a relationship. And then you move slowly into whatever's next. Depending on the time. So that's not really a valid question to ask at the bar. So, because you're risking sounding desperate, desperate, Boogette. Thank you so much for coming to the Let Me Stress You Out show. Thank you, Vice President, for your encouragement. Thank you so much. Cassandra, thank you for coming to the Let Me Stress You Out show. Everybody who left in here... Thank y'all so much for coming. Nikita, Teresa, goddamn Connie, uh, Renee Jackson, Ashley Drew, what it do? Renee Jackson, I appreciate you. Romisha, thank you so much for coming. This is the Let Me Stress You Out show. Crazy ass niggas do. Goddamn right, Amy Ross with the sauce. Thank you so much for coming. Shawana, I'm glad you made it, baby. Brandy, thank you for coming, baby. I'm going over to Instagram and start it all over. I need to take me a quick five minute breather. To catch my breath because I've been talking this long. Shit. You can take a boogie. You don't see moss. Hell no. Nah, that sea moss ain't don't make you no superhero now. Yeah. I wasn't about to go up against no 6'5 nigga with a pistol in his hand. No, sir. Ask any questions like, do of your children have special needs or disabilities? <laughs> do any of your kids have special needs that may or may not affect you at the bar? That's a question for later on down the line as well. So thank you from the Let Me Search You Out show, from me, my vice president, Michelle, and my goddamn cousin, Sandra, and my cousin, Roylette, who's showing me so, such, a, such a good time in D.C. and the Baltimore area, DMV. Thank y'all so much for having me, DMV. We broadcast live from the DMV. And again, shout out to my partner, Cleon, the comedian, and shout out to my to my young partner, um, Sir Alex, who put a hell of a show on that Scully's in um, Parkville, Maryland, which is outside of Baltimore. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been your host. I thank y'all for coming. See y'all on IG. I'm going to try to muster up some strength.